Hello, everyone, and welcome back to AP Government and Politics Review. Today, we're diving into an important document from American History, Federalist No. 10, written by James Madison. This essay is a cornerstone of American political thought, and it addresses the crucial issue of factionalism in a democratic society. So, let's explore Madison's vision and the effectiveness of his arguments by diving into the text itself. First, let's set the stage. Federalist 10 was written in 1787 as part of the Federalist Papers, a collection of essays aimed at promoting the ratification of the United States Constitution. James Madison, one of the founding fathers, penned this particular piece. In Federalist 10, Madison famously wrote, Liberty is to faction what air is to fire. What does he mean by this, and why is it relevant? Madison was deeply concerned about factionalism, which he defined as groups of citizens with shared interests acting in ways that harm the common good. He believed that liberty allows for the existence of factions, just as air is necessary for fire. Madison didn't see factions as inherently bad, instead, he focused on managing their effects. He goes on to say, there are two methods of curing the mischiefs of faction, the one, by removing its causes, the other, by controlling its effects. Madison lays out two key approaches to addressing the problem of factions, eliminating their causes or controlling their effects. The former would mean suppressing liberty, which Madison saw as unacceptable. Instead, he advocated for the latter. Madison writes, the latent causes of faction are sown in the nature of man. Here, Madison acknowledges that factions are an inherent part of human nature. People will always have different opinions, interests, and affiliations. So, trying to eliminate factions entirely is unrealistic. He then states, the most common and durable source of factions has been the various and unequal distribution of property. Madison identifies the unequal distribution of property as a primary source of factionalism. He believed that as long as people have different levels of wealth and property, they will form factions to protect their interests. Now, let's talk about Madison's solution for controlling the effects of factions, which he calls the extended republic. Madison explains, by enlarging too much the number of electors, you render the representatives too little acquainted with all their local circumstances and lesser interests. Madison argues that in a large, diverse republic like the United States, it's harder for a single faction to gain a majority. The diversity of interests across a vast territory makes it less likely for one group to dominate. He concludes, the influence of factious leaders may kindle a flame within their particular states, but will be unable to spread a general conflagration through the other states. Madison believed that in an extended republic, local factions might exist, but their influence would be limited to their specific areas, preventing them from causing widespread conflict. So, in Federalist 10, James Madison tackled the problem of factionalism head-on. He recognized that factions were an inherent part of human nature but proposed a system of government, the extended republic, that could control their effects. His ideas on the balance between liberty and controlling factions remain relevant in modern political discussions. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth explorations of historical documents and ideas. And as always, feel free to leave your thoughts and questions in the comments section below. Thanks for joining us on AP Government and Politics Review.